just pull it. I guess they have the, some kind of locking mechanism here that you can't pull. Well, it makes no sense. Why would someone pull it straight like this anyway, right? Especially if this guy's taller. It won't even go any more, further anyway, so. Uh, oh, huh. This might be the one we actually need to drill our plastic once we center punch it anyway. Uh, I wouldn't center punch plastic. That might crack. We'll see, but it's good to know that we can see, probably use this guy here to create our hole for our strut bar. What do you guys think? He's pretty big, isn't he? I think almost enough. I think we we'll probably use him maybe in a pattern cutter. You think? Let's try it out next time. Or we will be trying it out. Um, let's go and put this back in place. We'll keep this here because he might be helpful for us again. The center punch, probably not on plastic. It'll probably crack the plastic more than anything. Uh, if we do need to make a center punch, we can just put a little marker on there. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, try to get this guy off and get him nicely squared away. Put these drill holes here. Let's see if we can find a small... I thought we had a little bit... Oh, there it goes. There's some more here. Are these the same one I just shifted down there? <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. Um, I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing these are... All right, so... Here's, oh no, these are the ones that we're gonna about to use for ours. See, there, maybe we can, well, we can try replace them, but we need to find out what size he fit. He might be an M8, I'm hoping he's an M6, but we won't know unless we pull him out first. So let's get the socket to pull him out. Cause I don't remember. Um, so let me find the socket here. M13. Mm, I don't think it's a, I think more than likely it's M12. It, it looks too bigger than M, it looks way too bigger than your typical M10. Uh, so, but I could be wrong, looks can be very deceiving still. Normally I can try to eyeball it, but this case scenario, 916 could be also. But this is 11. I don't think it's 11, but we'll swing it over just to see. Uh, definitely not 11 and if not 11 then probably is 10 so let's try find 10 again I didn't think it was 10 it's not 13 for sure here's our 10 let's see if this 10 guy will fit lo and behold it was always 10 I'm always second guessing that okay so let's take the 10 millimeter socket driver we need the small one we can use the extension just to give it that height. And then I think we might need the flathead to pull his teeth out too as well. All right, so here we go. Yeah, unfortunately this is still not level. It seems like it just goes that way. But the main thing is he's tight in there now. He's tight all the way to the metal core. So it's a good thing for us. That way when we put our feet rubbing back and forth, this guy has some reinforcement there. Hi Mop Mop, how are you? Daddy left for work already. Mommy coming soon. The little one here got to ride on the, the a dinosaur. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> yeah, you can't use a child star. Yeah, go inside. It's cold, cold. Go, mommy coming. Go, go eat pizza. Pizza for breakfast, right? That's an uncle for you. I would. Go, 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 go inside. Go. Daddy left for work. All right, so we're backing this out. Let's see if he comes out on his own wheel. There's no way of going from the bottom and reaching him. Oh, so I'm gonna spin it for, oh, he, look, he's backing out. It looks like he has enough thread to back him out, so that's a good sign. Now I need to have for him to come completely out. Now he does have some blue Loctite on him. So let's All right, so it doesn't seem like he wants to come all the way out. But anyway, we got enough slant here we can either a little flat head on them or something or I could have got my fingernail in there but why hurt yourself there we go okay so you can see here this is the problem with him see that he's freaking he, we should have here let me take a shot back to him as well we should have just
We should have replaced him when we get a chance instead of uh, playing around with him. So let's go not entertain him anymore. Let's go ahead and find the right Allen bolts. See, there's two brand new ones here, actually. These guys will probably work just fine. But I think we're saving these for some other areas that might need it. But you know what? We probably don't. More than likely, we'll probably be replacing these guys anyway with um, Allen bolts. So we could have just used these guys here, really. They're longer, and they have more thread, more cleaner thread. So these two guys might be a good replacement for them. And they also have a flange, too, which is kind of neat. I think in this case, the flange is always good. You can see the washer's still there anyway. So it has a washer as well. But a flange wouldn't hurt. I mean, a flange wouldn't... Actually, this guy doesn't look too bad in there. Let's see. We can just go and take these guys in there. Now, I think these might came from somewhere else anyway. But I'm sure more than likely we already replaced it with an Allen bolt from it. So let's see here. Let's try want to make sure it dries in yeah this one dries in so this guy might work just beautifully and it matches a little bit of the silver area so let's go and put some blue loctite on him and let's get this guy drilled on there now i know he doesn't really need all this length unfortunately but like i said maybe we could try to replace them all with allen bolts right why not so you can see here yes this is likely a little bit more length like a maybe a millimeter or maybe a centimeter actually so that's the case um, well, let me go close the door so I can see out. We got the heat turned on in the house. Close my mop. All right, here we go. I call her Fatty Fat. You know how kids are to get nicknames. I don't know. It's gonna, I guess I got called that. My brother calls me that. <laughs> Fatty. <laughs> Fat man. <laughs> All right, here we go. What am I doing with this? Uh, yeah, we're going to try and use it too because we need to start driving the socket, right? So let's open this up as well. And I think our mirror is supposed to come today. So today is Monday. So it should come. I'm looking forward to it. And then I was thinking, you know, instead of forcing, you know, the mirror rearrangement, I want to force it with the JB Weld backing of it. Because if I do it before, I mean, then we're going to, you know, even though we want the JB Weld cure, we're going to put a lot more pressure on that little back piece to arrange the mirror. So I want to do it right after, uh, JB Well should be the last one. I'll do it right after everything is put in there, sort of, including maybe even our brake handle. So we might not even install anything in the front end until we actually get the brake handle installed. So let me go ahead and take this guy. Oh. All right, we'll put this box. Look at that, see, same blue. These guys are freaking awesome. They're made really well. I mean, I'm, I'm very pleased with them. Look at that. Gorgeous galore. All right, so we probably will work on these guys here more than likely than this one. This is only made for a strut, it seems like. Um, so let's go ahead and look for some Allen bolts. That will fit this just nicely. Here's our Allen. And let's find out our bolt that was stripped again. Got everything everywhere right now. Excuse me. Put these guys here, that way we won't lose them. All right, so let's go ahead. And there's was the strip one, right? Here's where the one that we thought might replace him, but for right now, I guess he's okay. We'll put this guy back somewhere. Wasn't there another pair of him? It's just, oh. There was, but I probably, did I dig them in? No, I didn't. Remember then, there's a washer in there already. That's why it's not eating into the, the plastic, but I can see it's digging a little bit. Okay, so let's go and find this substitute, right? He is an M6. We gotta find the right length M6, though. This doesn't look too bad. What do you guys think? Now we'll put it in there, we'll also see. See there? Gave him the same length. But now he does Allen. Same length. But it has a flinch built in, which is fine because it has a washer built in the other one anyway. Okay, so let's see if we put this guy in there and see how he looks. Doesn't look actually that bad either. Let's see. I guess we can go and prepare him now for blue Loctite. I would rather get a black one in there, but I don't think I have a black one that big anyway. So more than likely, we'll just do without it. Okay, so we're going to replace these guys here. Let's put our blue Loctite. I'm pretty confident he'll just drive right in. Can't find the other one. We, we just played around with him. I 
put the other one back, but that one's no, I bet you it's somewhere in the ground here. Once, oh, look, right there. I always say it's too soon. And there he is. Don't want to lose all my screws, you know? I might be nuts, but I don't want to lose all my screws. <laughs> okay, here we go. Look at that, all that, that leftover. Try to conservatively get it from here. You don't need much. In fact, you only need the areas. I don't even know how far you need it, but. All right, you do want to give some, but you know, blue Loctite not going to work if you do too little. It doesn't work on a little basis. If you do too little, it defeats the whole purpose because it doesn't have enough cement compound to really, whoa, look at that. That's way too much too. <laughs> that could be used for another one. So let's prepare the other one as well then. Okay, don't drip. This is the new guy on the block. That's why he's doing this. All right, so we're going to go and prepare him for the next one here. We're going to take the same size bolt here, you can see. I'm going to rub it toward the center more, I think. That's where it really needs it the most. Okay. All right, so uh, let me see where I'm going to put this. All right, put it here. Hopefully, it won't red it. Put it standing there. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy in. Okay, he's coming in. Let's close this blue lock type before he decides to blurp on his own. Yeah, he's amateur style right now. <laughs> All right, so he's done, closed up. Let's go and get the right Allen socket. Again, that's probably, I would say, an H... Mm, it looks like an H5. H5 meaning hex 5. or F, It's definitely not S E. There you go. I'm getting good at this. H5. These would be nice if these weren't, um, you know... Sure, so we could put some of these guys in there more heavy duty. Now, it does look kind of bulky though, doesn't it? But I think it's still the same kind of level flesh because I don't think you can get your feet like on there. But it looks pretty damn cool though. I mean, this one's plastic, so there's no point of that one. That, now, what's great about this one, I feel like it's tight, so we can hand, we can uh, torque it now. Or not torque it. Righty tighty. I think you just swing this to the right and it'd be good like that. See if it feels like it's gripping. It should feel like it's gripping and stopping. There we go. Now it's getting tight. This is what we want. Not to strip. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. Look at that. Compared to what we had previously. Well, we'll see. I'll show you what we had previously. Let me bring the right socket in there and let's get this guy ready to roll too. We'll, bring, we'll come back and get this guy. Oh, we'll move him now because we need to work on that side right now. All right. Transfer him back here in this little level pad. Let's go and get this guy removed. Bring our socket here and our chair. Yeah, I just want to save my back for the long run here. All right. See, this one's nice and aligned. See that? This one's perfect. Other than that little small misalignment, you can't tell it's black on black, but you can see it's a little small misalignment. But other than that, he's just perfectly rounded. All right, so let's try to do everything equal. So that one's coming off, this one's coming off. And they are the same length of thread, so it's good. We can save these guys for backup. You see here, they didn't cover it all the way. <laughs> I wish they would think about all these things, but that's okay. It doesn't really bother me like that, you know what I mean? As long as it's secure and tight, that's not it. Even with the hexagon, well, actually, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. Let me, let me try to straighten my hexagon, too. I, I I want to keep them in the same perfect harmony. See, the washer's still in there. It's like a silver washer, unfortunately. Wish you could have got black one instead. Um, too late to really pull it out. It's probably dig dig. But the next time, we can swap it out with her. Actually, silver doesn't look too bad. A little bit of silver and black mixed together. Does not look bad at all. All right, let me go and tighten this by hand. Just use this to help drive it. Okay, there it goes. Some of the Loctite's getting into the groove now, which is perfect. We want the Loctite to do the work for us. 
not getting to the metal yet. I think it's just going to the plastic. Now it's getting to the metal. You can start feeling the stiffness once it gets to the metal. There you go. Now I can't tighten it no more by by sheer force. So I can get this guy again on there. I shouldn't use the extension. You guys can see a little bit better from my angle. Righty tidy, swing it over to the right. Okay, there it goes, starting to get really tight. All right. So what I'm gonna do is kind of level it like that, even though it's just hexagon. Facing like this way, the diamond shape can face across. So this one, we could do the same thing with this guy. I'm just gonna reach over there real quick and I'll have to swing myself. Actually, he's already there almost. Maybe. Maybe he is. Now he is. Almost. I wanted him that little flat side to level up with this this beam right here, sort of. I think he's there. Maybe a little tad more. There we go. Nice. So there we go. We, we improved on the existing bolts. I don't think there's any other big... Mm-hmm. Let's go with this guy too. Let's take this guy out and put some Allen bolts on him. He'd probably look so much nicer with some Allen bolts. So let's do that as well. Let's get a couple more of these guys. Uh, we don't need these guys anymore. So they will be our spares now. And let's get two more of these guys here. And let's start the process all over again. We're gonna need the same socket. Yeah, I think Allen bolts, cause this guy shows the most, right? With some Allen bolts, he looks way more sicker than um, just these hexagon. So let's go ahead and set these guys up. So if we're gonna take a socket, drive him out first. You gotta be careful with this guy because his setup was, he's pretty much the one that's tying everything sort of. But I think it's so far so good. Back him up. We'll get our blue Loctite on them. I think I could probably get right off the cap now. Coming down pretty good. It's a little feel like the A team when you do a good job. Like I love it when a plan comes together. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> God, that's just, uh, so 80s, right? Uh, but those were the shows. MacGyver, you remember MacGyver? Uh, some of you do. <laughs> some of you are like who? Huh? Uh, <sighs> Guyver was incredible. I mean, any situation he was able to jerry rig anything to get out of the situation, and it always worked. Well, that's Hollywood for you. Everything works in Hollywood, maybe not in real life. <laughs> okay, here we go. So here we go. I was gonna get some off this guy. We have to go crazy or anything. And I think that's enough there for one. Just really want to clean my my thread dye there. Okay, let me pre-put him in there. I think there's metal in him, right? That's the reason why I'm confidently... I think there is, because that's a metal screw. They wouldn't drive this kind of fatty in a in a plastic housing. That would be insane. All right, so let's get him in much as we can. There's also a silver washer in them already, which I would have been okay if they put a black washer, but that's okay. I think what it is is a silver one reflects off the black and it makes it look like it's a black washer too. So it doesn't really matter. It kind of chameleons there. All right, there we go. It's driving. Oh, this is, might even be a smaller one than this actually. Was there something smaller than this? Cause this one looked like it went straight easily, easily. Let's see. I think I see him. Well, I think that's him right there. And I think he's going all the way further down. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's almost got another centimeter. So we can actually get away with something even smaller than this guy. Only because I can actually feel him right here. I can feel him. He's right there. See? Yeah, I can probably see him. See there? He's coming out. Oh, we'll see here. Uh, let's see. I can see him. See there? He's coming out. That's him right there. Right there. Let's see if I get the light on it. See there? Watch, I'll turn him so you can see. I'll turn him back out. See that? He has almost a centimeter more to go further. So we could probably get something like maybe half his size. 
not half his size, but maybe like three fourths his size. So I just I just don't want to use things that don't need it. So we can go with something like these guys here. And I kid you not, we'll still see the thread. So these guys are a little bit shorter. Again, there's no need to use the back one when we can have a little bit more precise. So let's take this one back out, shall we? We'll wipe out the blue Loctite because we don't want it hard and un unused thread. We'll put some more in a new one here. Blue, lo blue Loctite doesn't do anything to plastic, so. But it does cement metal. There you go. Oh, see, I'm learning. I'm learning how to use this guy. He's he's a different animal. <laughs> That's the same. It's just so maybe how I pressure him. I got so used to the other one where I have to keep pumping in order to get some out. So this one he's like, dude, I'm full, I'm brand new. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. There it goes. See I'm already, I'm already hitting metals and I'm still spinning quite a bit. There it goes. Perfect. Now we can go and tighten it. And let's see actually, even though I'm hand tightening it. Let's see how much thread we were able to get out. I don't see it flushed out yet, do you? I see some old stuff here. Let me go look it out. Am I even looking at the right area? Sure, but I'm looking at the right area still so to be honest with you. Sorry about that. Let's see here. Where are you at, buddy? Oh, I'm not even looking at the right area. He should be around this. There you go. He's so he's just black on black, so that's why it's hard to see. There you go. Let me. I, you guys are probably looking at the right area. I wasn't paying attention. This one's right here, we have to look. There it goes. I can see a little bit of thread of him coming out. Oh, actually, no, I can't, because that's just the other side. There you go, yeah, see, he's coming out. I'm gonna spin it, that way you guys can see it. And spin it now with the wrench. Come on, righty tidy. You guys see him coming out? A little bit more, yep, there he is, see? That's enough right there. If they come out more than that, I mean, they, they need to come out just a millimeter more. You got all the thread to really lock all that you want in there. So there's no need, and it's still got ways to go too because I still have to tighten, tighten. Okay, there we go, almost there. I feel like I could do one more round. That's it, I'm not gonna try to force this guy. Seven foot pounds could be enough torque. Seven enough foot pounds. Just gonna level them up. Even the hexagon, I want to level up. There we go. See, I put them, I put them the flat like this, like this. The diamond shape can go like the top ways. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and get our blue lock tight. And let's get our missing screws here and there. That we're not finding that we need. Yeah, so totally much better look. Ah, I could have got this black one, huh? I think the black one would be better. I'm sorry, but I gotta be, I gotta do it right. Let's get the black one. Let's get the black washer in that one. That one didn't chameleon enough. And he's easier to get. So if he's easier to get, we might as well do it. So let's go find that washer bin. All right, let's do this one and then we'll put the black washer, see how this one looks, and then we can determine yay or nay for the other one as well. I'm sure it'll look much better than this one. Yeah, this one has a little bit of silver flicking on you, like you like the mix match too much. But these ones, they look okay though. I mean, see they're dark. It looks okay, it gives it a little bling shine, but over here, it's exposed too much bling. So let's give this guy, first of all, let's put these guys back where we don't need them. All right, so this one no longer need. And this one will soon no longer be needing. Get this guy, let's get bring the blue Loctite over to us. Do not ever put your stuff here in balance. I will put flush on the ground, just whatever reason. Click, 
whole thing falls out. You got about half an hour cleaning up for no reason. It's worth it just to take that one second and move it out of the way. All right. So I'll dry this guy out. Flick it back, lefty loosey. Gonna do it by hand now. See that? Even one screw just fell off right now. So I put this here and shook it off. So imagine you got the whole bin there to pick up. It's not worth it. Not worth it at all. I tried to use the extension, but it was just too wobbly, sorry. Alright. This one looks like it's taking forever. <laughs> Alright, I'll use the extension, but I won't I won't put the ratchet. Oh, my phone is almost giving out, so let me put the charger back on there. How simple is that, huh? Oh, I might need to push the button because I don't see it lighting up. Or maybe that's his, oh yeah, it's 5% left. Wow. I'm not sure why it's so low. Oh because my charger wasn't connected at the time. So 5% left, I just turned back the charger on. Good, there we go, now it's charging. I can tell when it's charging because my whole screen illuminates brighter, allowing me to see what I'm actually recording. When it's on sort of battery saving mode, it'll still let you record though, but more than likely it's not. So probably fish this out with a piece of plier. Wow, it's dried in there a little bit, pretty good. Uh, let's see here, let's see here, it's a good washer. I mean, it looks like it flushed perfectly there. I'm not sure if I can get, even get it out with a magnet because it's so tied in there. But we'll find out. Find out if this magnet lets me go. Nope. And it's probably aluminum anyway. So it probably won't even come out with or without the magnet. So let's see. What Okay, the video cut off on me, I guess, because my battery wasn't hooked on there long enough for it to kickstart a 5%. I guess when you initially hit the battery, it looks like it's trying to get its charging me mechanism set up. So it might take that full 5% and just killed it. So anyway, we got this now. Um, we I did put a black washer. I was able to find one of them, actually, a black washer. And look how much more nicer it looks. You see this side here? That has the black washer on there. It looks like it's so much more blended or more like, you know stealth mode and versus this one with the still the silver wash you see that's like a sore thumb still even with the allen bolt it didn't help it. but these guys here they don't look no problem at all with the silver wash in fact they gave it a little bit more shine and bling when you get near it so that's fine but these guys are they're just you know too much uh exposed in the front surface so we're going to do the same thing for the other one so let's go back i put blue lock tie him array ready to roll and then this guy here he just needs it done so let's go ahead and get the allen socket again um Oh, there it goes. They're on there. They're all everywhere in here I need, including the washers. So let's find the right washers for him. We got to first of all take him out. Okay, lefty loose. I think it's still probably lefty loose or probably left righty tidy because I just tightened the other one in. All right, so let's go ahead and unbolt him. Hey, we have the material, might as well use it, right? I mean, if some people just have the idea of putting an Allen bolt, they're really happy already, but I guess uh, you want more. <laughs> it's never satisfied. So let's go and put the black washer on there. Looks so much more cleaner. In fact, if I could have got away replacing these guys brand new, I would have done it too, but that's okay. They're gonna be stepped on anyway, right, mainly. I mean, the whole thing here is gonna be stepped on, but I don't think I write with too many passengers in the back, so I'm fine. I use this little pick hook here to actually pull the washer out. I know it's kind of nasty looking. Look like someone cleaned out their bubble gum or something there. There you go, got him out. And now let's go and find his better substitute, sort of. One that actually fits in there. Now these guys look like they will fit in there, but they don't. Maybe this one might. See, they're thick. See, they won't. Oh, it fit. <laughs> that work. Uh, let me go ahead and get them on the other way, though. We want the smooth side facing us. For that reason, so let's go and put the smooth side in there. See, now they don't fit with the smooth side. What's the deal with that? I guess they maybe just need a little jolt, huh? Okay, let's go and re blue lock tight this guy a little bit. Look at that, it's spilling all over again. This guy's just oozing wastefully, unlike his his uh, his predecessor, you can say, right? Look at that, I can get some right out of him without even opening cap. Come on. Be nice. Okay. Make sure we don't... Probably most of it's rubbed off onto the rubber before it actually gets to the thread, but that's okay. 
that's why probably the thicker chapstick one might do you better because it, it forces to stay on the on the thread before it actually you know gets to the thread so let me go ahead and clean this guy up a little bit I'll use some of my old bullet tissue here doesn't really matter just wiping it make sure I don't put that back in my nostril <laughs> this guy's gunky uh, now his threads probably leaking and he's a thread locker what do you know about that huh but again they don't work on plastic <sighs> wipe this guy clean all right, I don't trust you anymore with my clean surface. Put this guy down now. All right, so now we can go ahead and tighten him. And he should give enough perfect thread from the other end as well. Careful, you ain't get too much here. I can go one more round, that's it. Again, seven foot pounds should be enough. A little bit more to the right. Looks like it's almost a line. Try to line it with this guy here. Not, so there it goes look how much nicer that looks more like stealth black mode right you don't see the white washer it looks so much more professional it's right on there cool so we got that now straight now so there's no more excuse now let's go ahead and get this guy off of here while we still have a lot of energy in our our thrust so let me go ahead and this guy pop out here or what okay let's go ahead and put these guys back in their socket so we don't lose them inject it this is a great tool. I don't know. We need ever that. that I don't even ever ever know if we'll ever need this size big one for messing with a scooter. But who knows? Maybe when we build a 232, huh? <laughs> I, I doubt it. But we, uh, the chances are of needing that size of magnitude beyond me. All right, let's put our center punch tool here that helped us. I'm not sure if the center punch tool helped us or the drill bit, but I'm sure both of them combined, right? Uh, again, sometimes your center punch tool, you probably have to do like a lot, 20 of them in order to make sure they really get the groove in. But I think with the right drill bit that had the groove in the first place, we would have been okay too. <laughs> okay, let's clean this up a little bit. I got hardware stores, my friend. Uh, Lowe's, Home Depot. Those guys are great. Uh, there we go. Get everything squared away. All right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and remove this. We're gonna put it in the yoga mat. Let's go ahead and close this guy up for now. I hate this right here. It always, I think I got a broken one. Yeah, there is a bro it is a broken one. That's probably why. So, I'm gonna put this over here. Probably have to get that guy replaced out. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna put this in a yoga mat. That way, protect it from damage. Or scrape, you can say, while we work on getting this guy fixed up. I think the yoga mat should be fine. Bring a chair so you guys can see me in the back working. And you can see the paint job too, by the way, when I take it off. Oh, we're ready to rock and roll. Oh. All right, there we go. Make sure I cover my back because I don't want to feel like last time. All right, so I can just lift off. It wasn't really connected to anything. Put it in here so it won't get damaged. Put him on his belly, sort of. Okay, so here we go. We're going to work on this guy here. You can see how clean the paint job is, actually. This is phenomenal. I learned my lesson as, what, the third time I attempted to spray can paint now? Or paint ever? So this is amazing. Look. Holly looked like it's done with the factory, right? Other than that little scrape mark, which we didn't sand. And now, if I did some sanding, it'd probably be worse than this. But I got every detail on this guy. Look at how much more shiny, glossy, black he is. Even here, too, we're about to tie. Now, over here, a little bit shows, a little exposed. But other than that, I'm really thrilled with this.
paint job. Nicely glistened black. So improvement, you know, time to time. This guy here, we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna mold this. Now we do have a, you can see here, we do have a little head start here. We know that there's a center pin here and the holes are somewhere right here, right? So we might need to maybe loop it. But before we even do that, let's go and get the other guy on here. So I can put this here without it breaking. Hopefully it doesn't break. This looks like a pretty stable area for it. All right, so there we go. Putting it back in there because it wasn't sure it's going to be stabilized or not. So I put it right there. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and bring that guy, finish him around. I put him in a little box here. So let's see, you guys can come with me. I always want you guys to come with me. this tool away put a little scrubber pad here I've been with us so thick and thin now it's thin <laughs> all right so here we go oh man I can't wait to install the the cup holder that would probably be my most favorite part there it is so we're gonna also put it with the we call that the silicone not silicone I apologize uh, we're gonna put it with the weather seal <laughs> we can use a window of weather sealant there to find out let me put this out of the way. Get these guys out of the way. Alright, so here we go. Oh, there's one washer here. I don't want to waste a washer, especially when you're short and you need it. And there's one size here. I always pick up all your pieces. Put him back in his flap. Alright, so. We're going to prepare this guy here. Two of them. That's all we need for right now. And we're going to get our little window foam here. That's what we're going to be using to set this guy up. Take a little snippet of them in the area. Not be anywhere. Take this. So I can open this up. Just for something so, so thin as this guy, but I do. I'm gonna have to rip him nicely here. There you go. Like a little instant noodle package here. Alright, so let me find his front end. I want to keep him inside the bag so I can swerve him back easily or not have to worry about swerving him back. Should be in somewhere. There it is. This is our end, our starting point. nice and mushy too. Alright, so there's only adhesive on one side, so that's kind of nice. That way you don't have to worry about the other side being adhesive. Uh, sort of, I guess. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, it seems like it's only adhesive on one side. This tape is sure is freaking strong. See this one here? Oh man, this is adhesive also. The lady didn't know what she was talking about. The, the representative there. She goes, it's only adhesive on one side. You can see? See how it feels? She didn't realize it was actually gliding on this guy. <laughs> so that, oh, she might be right. There's no adhesive here. It's weird, they put the adhesive where this backing plate is. So, she's right, she's right. Look, I can glide my finger right here. But this one I can't. The minute I glide it, it gets really sticky, right? Perfect, so there you go. We're gonna cut to our proportion back here. We'll just get a bit out. Right there, a pair of scissors would be better, huh? Alright, you can almost rip it really. So let's go and get these guys off. Get back everything out. It's gonna create the final cushion to be able to keep them from not spinning freely. Also tightening them to the bolt. Or tightening them to the all we really need is to get the silver chrome one out, flex it. But in order to do that, we need to get our socket again. We're gonna use our new uh, setup. We're gonna take these guys now. No more of that weird handle Allen thing. We're gonna use the real deal. Real deal fully field. And remember, it was 1 8, so this is 1 8 right here. So, 1 8. See, it says 1 8 right there. It's not easy to remember. All right, so, we got 1 8. There you go, you can always drive it by hand because they're pretty loosened already. Yep. 
one eighth. Yeah. Perfect. Don't want to lose the screws. We'll keep them nicely there. Together. Together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do. Doesn't matter, these guys are interchangeable. We're gonna go ahead and seal the deal. Oh, look at that. It's already stuck in stuck in RA to this guy. I don't want to use the dirty part, so let's try to get a nice cleaner. Oh, this is gonna be messy. We probably have to get uh, a little bit more. Okay, so I was gonna get a pair of scissors versus trying to cut it with well, maybe just a nice razor blade will probably do just fine. Just gotta be careful with it though. God, I love this razor blade because it always gives me trouble. It just, I think we opened it last time by doing this, right? We're about to take it out and all of a sudden it decides to work on its own. No, it still didn't. <laughs> okay, let's do this again. There it goes. I guess it gets jammed. There's probably a little grease or something that needs to be lubricated in there. Well, probably a pair of scissors would be even better. Scissors are much better for this job. Uh, let me go. Ahead. I have a pair of scissors laying around here. Yeah, let me find that pair of scissors real quick. I have to grab it from the inside. I'll see it out here. Interesting cut. All right, let me get a pair of scissors. I'll be right back. All right, we got a pair of scissors here, so let's get started. Let me clean off the temp here. Look at that, it sticks really well to this guy already. It's like, I know where you're trying to get at. All right, so we couldn't use this too, but oh well, we are did a little nice clean job on it. So what we can do is pre-measure this. Oh man, it's gonna be sticky, sticky. Look, so you can actually flex this forward here. I wanna get the most foam in there, so I might even level it and layer it in there as I go. But I really want to measure it though. Get an idea. Actually, this fits perfect for it. Let's see here. So we're looking at it by somewhere. Just get out over a little bit, just fill in that little crease area. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to be perfect, perfect. So we'll do it like right there. See? All right, now we can do our thing here. Now we can play around with the hair out of our finger first. All right, not bad, look. Right. I'm glad we got this size. There we go. This will be the, this will be the sponge we're looking for. There we go, we got one set done. That wasn't hard, right? Now we have to open this wider or else it won't fit in the bar. So we'll almost turn it into a C from an O, right? <laughs> okay. So we got that one there. So let's go and get the next one. Should have just measured twice the same, but that's okay. It's not like it's rocket science right here. So let's go and turn this out as much as we can outward. Be careful, you don't flex this too much. It doesn't look like it'll give you that much free play over a long run. So once you try to figure out where you want, you want to maybe start, you know, bending and shaping it. I mean, stop bending and shaping it. Come on, guy. I never worked with window insulator before, but that's pretty much what this is. There we go. Got him in. Table eventually there's a little dirty spot. Shame on you. There we go. Gonna get the insulator nicely sealed in there. You can apply pressure now or later, it doesn't matter because eventually it's gonna apply a lot of pressure after you're done. Once you get him in there, this guy doesn't seem like he fits entirely the way I want him to. I'm gonna pull him out a little bit. I don't. I think the adhesive helped a little bit, but not very necessary. You could probably have done this without adhesive. It just needs a little bit of rubber. But we tried putting that rubber one; it was way too thick. So this one's hopefully is balanced. Now let's talk about luxury here. The scooter's getting the royal treatment here. It's got plushed chrome steel. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we can't fit these guys in yet, so we gotta fit the clamp first. So 
Let's go back in there and put the clamps on there. Now. And while we're doing that, we got to tie. Now, this guy worked really well for me. I used this to lift him off while moving the bike outward to paint. So now I have to put him back to where he's going. Also, all I did also was I put uh, re put a, a little small one here. Oh, by the way, I didn't even show you guys this. Some exciting good news. Look, I installed the decompression tube already. This is the NCY decompression tube uh, right here. Um, this is how it was installed. I'll show you the package here. There we go. Got some uh, a few extra accessories that I still left behind in there, but um, these accessories didn't come with it. These were for the oil cooler and everything, but it comes in a package. A decompression tube comes like this. Uh, you'll get it. It says NCY on there, so the hologram for authenticity. But this I installed it. You do actually want to get a 17 millimeter socket because it is. You want to actually be able to tighten it because what happened is when you put the hose here and the hose flexes it. If you tighten it by hand only, it actually will will spun this freely so like i said earlier um you can do it by hand but actually you have to go back and tighten it with a wrench like a, an open wrench like this get it in there wedged in there and just go righty tighty 17 millimeter again to tighten this guy right here so you would go in there stick it in there and you just give it a good you know and now this is already fully tightened i don't want to go anymore you don't want to put too much pressure again these are aluminum gasket and they're not really much force uh much uh support here it's just this whole piping only you see how it's kind of kind of crankcase molded on there you know aluminum cast so gotta be really careful don't want to over tighten it or else you'll break it so we got that guy there you can see how i routed it i came up like this i did a little you know sort of a candy cane i guess you could say um you can see here how it comes up like this and don't worry about those little small uh, holes i'll explain that a little bit here afterward but there it goes, I just looped it back out. The reason why I did that was, for one thing is gravity, nothing can just shoot up a bit, you know, shoot up all the way. So it's got to clear almost six inches up, straight up, in order to actually come all the way over here and then go forcefully straight into our engine crankcase. I did that purposely. I didn't want it level because anything can actually be leveled and with a little bit of air push, slides, it forces the whatever contaminant straight in back into your oil cooler the reason why you wanted to have a crankcase in the first place for it to blow things out of it the oil mainly you know it's not going to ever blow that high even with my high compression engine the most will probably rise up will probably be maybe about three or four inches but that's just good relief this is like you being human you need to burp or else you feel really sick you feel bloated so the crankcase needs to also burp and this is gonna allow it to, whatever you could say, fart. <laughs> it allow it to like kind of burp his molder oil out a little bit so it doesn't put too much strain on his whole body. I'm trying to, you know, move air and motor oil elsewhere. So now it has a place of, of, you know, kind of reserve itself to blow out a little bit. So you wanna keep this whole tube clean for it. And the only reason why you have an open end here is for it to vent the air out, you know, force the air out from the motor oil. So you don't want anything else to go back in. It's almost like a one way pass, really. Just like a, our uh, you know crankcase ventilation thing right here it only has a lot one-way pass so that's why I did it there and I was deciding whether to tie strap the cable in there but I didn't want to crunch the cable on there so what I did was I just tie strapped it securely here on one side also allowing me to lift this guy up a little bit too which allows me to lift up my you know negative or ground wire to my starter motor so that's kind of nice there so that lifted up there it didn't take that long. It's a very simple install. If you see the schematic here, what I just did was I bolted it on, got my little seven millimeter socket, driving this, you know, steel tie st steel strap here back onto the 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 the, um, the hose here. The hose is a really nice, durable one. Seems like a really good quality. I kind of like that little clear mash look to it. You can see the inside the little fiber. So it's strong. It's just not you know plastic alone. So the steel fiber is holding the plastic smooth. Be careful. I don't want you to use anything sharp or feeling like it's going to any area that's sharp you don't want to put too much sharp pressure in there because a little pincher can still punch through the the hose and then cause some kind of vacuum leak or not vacuum leak but actually motor oil or whatever the breed leaking so you don't want that at all and then this comes here it seals it's just a nice little bevel bevel sealed here not really sealed but it's like vacuum it might be a one-way pass i don't know it might just be a regular just an open cap that allows in the bottom end let's see let's check it out See, we can see the nipple of it. Yeah, it's just an open cavity, probably. Uh, you could probably blow into it and get whatever coming through here. Back straight to your engine crankcase. So that's why I want to tilt it down. I didn't want to level it like this. I want to tilt it down. So it's going to take the opposite of gravity or, you know, force 
to actually shoot anything straight up here. Rain, however, won't hurt it because, you know, of course, raindrops is coming from top to bottom. Not, not ever. Even if you hit like a serious mud splash, the chance of it going through the little pipe shooting six inches eight. Now, that's why you have a wheel guard. Unfortunately, my wheel guard didn't, um, wasn't available. So, yeah, so uh, maybe in this case, the splash of the ricochet thing could have got shot a few times in there. You might be right about that. Maybe this wheel right here will shoot like dirt as it picks up and shoots straight in there. Because if dirt flies at a good angle and it captures it straight in there, but the chances are it probably ricocheted like this. So more than likely if it ricocheted like this, it's not going to really build enough momentum for it to swing a full 360 to go straight. It has to go like this straight up in order to get dirt straight shot in there. It has to climb at least about a good, I think, six to eight inches for it to make it to this half point for it to actually have gravity help it. And more than likely, the fumes of the pressure of the crankcase will start blowing this way anyway. So that's going to be almost like a slim chance. Um, now, also, I did this one. I said I was going to do it, and I did it. Um, I'm not sure if I should keep this long enough or short enough. It was originally was going like this. That's why I actually cut it longer. But these things do not come off back. You have to almost cut it off. There's no way. I don't even think it needs a clamp, but I put the clamp anyway just to assure itself. I also put the small tie strap in each one of these guys, especially this one. This one because it went to a really small bin. It wasn't really the right big size for it, but it worked. Uh, the crankcase ventilation is more likely it's just fluid coming out, so if it comes out a little bit through the creeks, it's okay. I wanted the fumes for my gasoline to come in, sort of comes here to this one-way pass. Now, this thing does not allow it to make a U-turn and go back in this way to get into your crankcase ventilation, your valve cover. Uh, here so it doesn't it comes from the crankcase ventilation positive crankcase ventilation comes out comes out through here one way pass this says something like one way look at the little arrow there so it comes out this way and then the extra fumes of it will go back into this little breather filter is a K&N uh, flow filter and it's going back into my K&N air filter well it's sort of you could say here's just lying there dormant but it's right near it. So you know that your air filter doesn't just stay stagnant air right here, right? It sucks. So whatever fumes that's trying breathing down will fall down and it gets sucked by the air filter. And that's how it goes back into this filtering system. So there's quite a bit of filtering system. There's one over here, which is the, the main. This is actually a fuel filter, but I turn it into a breather filter. You can see the flow of it. There's I directed the flow pattern directly there. So the crankcase ventilation comes through here. It comes through a little Y tube here. It's very simple. Some carburetor comes with Naruku actually gives you these Y tubes. You can modify and use it for this one, or you can just order it. We'll have it on our website. And then also this guy right here, ventilation coming from your actual gas tank, ventilate fumes will come over here and it gets reused back. Because again, I took out the EGR system, you know, the regulation crap, and uh, also don't tell anyone I'm in California. But um, I took that off, that little spider ugliness that had the little ugly, you know, brace looking thing. You know, we graduated, we're in the modifying mode now. And then I also took out the high flow, uh, not high flow, I'm sorry, the fuel pump. So there's no fuel pump. I have a manual open fuel pump, which is actually open right now. So there's no leak still, thank this. This little tie strap does amazing. So if you ever get a leak and you're trying thinking that tie strap doesn't, doesn't do the trick, it does. You got the wrong size tie strap. Get the small one. You'll see it's a big difference. So if you're using a big medium one, you're thinking, well, medium ones should be stronger than a small one, right? No, it's actually the little teeth there that can actually dig a little bit tighter in there for you into the little groove area to actually grab these guys. So you can see here, this was a little pain in the butt to install. Uh, what you can do is you can dip your hose in some hot water, and it does, you know, hot things expands a little bit or softens it out. And I was able to force that in there. Same thing with this side, too. Because I would probably drag my feet a little bit changing this because it was a pain in the butt to get these two ends from a 316 hose. I use a Felix brand hose. I use the quality ones here uh, from our website. So you can see here, this is the one I use, a Helix. Uh, they're like, um, they're clear fuel line hoses so they can tolerate petroleum and stuff like that. Um, there we go. I cut these guys out here. This is the size I use right here, 316s. Inner diameter, 516 outer diameter. Now these ones are a little bigger. They would slip down easily. No problem with these guys here. And these guys right here, they're made for. But when you come to the Y shape or the little um, you know, one-way uh, crankcase ventilation pass, that one's smaller even on this side. And this one's smaller as well. So you won't be able to use the bigger one-fourth diameter. It'll be just a little bit too big. I did, however, use this for my oil pump. But then again, remember I had a leak issue. But that little tall, small tie strap puts some more pressure on there, so that's no problem there as well. 
So yeah, that's why I want to share with you guys how I actually um, pretty much installed the NCY decompression tube now. So it's on there. I feel good now. I mean, my engine can actually breathe a little bit better. And then I stole this one-way uh, or wide-shaped pass to be able to reuse my crankcase ventilation. Because I knew that it was dripping and I had no place for it to go. But now if it goes into the K&N air filter, which, you know, gasoline is not going to harm your filter because it's, it's mainly exposed with a whole bunch of gasoline here already, combustion, fusion, and everything. So it's not going to kill it. So, And I did what I did was I got one of these little guys here, that little T sort of. I angled it downward. And you can see here, when I angled it downward, I use it sort of like an anchor onto the little... Now, careful, you might damage your K&N filter doing this. I don't know yet in the long run. But you can see how it's anchored. It's anchored to those little fins at the K&N, so you can actually tug it, it won't tug out, see? Kind of give it a lock right there. Now, taking out might be a different story. I haven't tried taking out yet, but I'm sure I'll have to, you know, wiggle it around or something like that in order to take it out. You can see here where those little teeth kind of digged into the fins. I got between one of these guys. I didn't actually just dig in, you know, straight inside of it. I just got in between here, but it locks into the little grids here of your K&N filter just nicely. So it won't just tug off loosely over vibration or anything like that. So, And I was trying to figure a way how to not cross it. I'm hoping this thing probably won't because the force is coming from this way, right? It's not every fuel coming here. So the force of it will flow. This little black tube goes straight almost inside of this guy here already. So it's going to bypass this. This is just a hold in place. So it's going to come flowing through here. And this guy's super tight. He's going to flow through here. So I don't think there will be any kind of leaks here in this part. Um, these guys are probably not going to have the same kind of problem either leak because they're already 316 inner diameter and they're going to, you know, a small Y-shaped diameter, 316 probably. So that should be no problem there. So I'm kind of happy. That took me a while to try to sort out, figure out. It was actually a pain getting this guy in there. That probably took the most time. It probably took half an hour. So but given that said, I don't want to take any more of your time talking about the same problem I had. But yeah, if you run into that, that's pretty much what happened. So... Uh, helix fuse and let's see if i still have the package for that canon filter part i'm here we go there you go so i can use that one right there that's the filter for this guy right here you can pick up at your auto parts store um, or you can use one of our um, you know fuel filter line uh, you can use one of these guys here whichever but it's just a little bit way to filter out some of the debris and stuff like that if it gets into it i should have put one over here too if i'm really paranoid but it's not supposed to be coming out right not going in so uh, we should be okay. Um, the motor oil can tolerate it. Now, changing the motor oil will require you to take this off. So, what you do when you change your motor oil to fill up new motor oil, you can, I don't know, you can probably maybe tilt this line and put motor oil, which you don't really want to get this dirty and sticky. The idea is just to let the motor oil breathe, right? And then it comes back on zone. So, more than likely, you'll probably have to take this whole assembly off and unscrew it. But since this tie strap there, you can leave it hanging a little bit. So, that should be no problem there. So, let's get back to starting now. Now that we've cover the things that I did while the camera was already full and recording that day. I did try my best to get that guy fixed yesterday so I can start on this, but I didn't have that much energy after that, after messing with that little filtered bottle here. So he took it, and then we also decided to paint while everything else is coming to play. So let's go cut this guy off. And I think we can route our Gibby wires back now. Let me, before we cut off, let's, let's route our Gibby wire where it should be. So this guy's clean. He's, see here he's dry they dry really fast within like 10 minutes or so i didn't have to worry about too much so it was like a, a you know they all just pull them out here to spray paint them really quickly just got things to cover them up you know learn my lesson on over spraying you gotta learn a lesson somewhere along the line right so let me see if i can tie this neatly maybe i'll even put through this little now these guys here if they had a choice of breaking off i would broke them off but uh, since they look like they're still pretty good, I'll keep them. I'll just keep them. Okay, so we want to make sure we got enough slack for our Gibby. This guy rides up to the Gibby box, like right there, right? So we want to make sure we give him enough slack to where he needs to go. So we could probably, probably put this guy here through this loop here. So we're going to give him a little, a little bit of that here and there loop. Alright, so there we go. You see, I even got through here. I got these guys as well, making sure they're covered. Because remember last time when we, we didn't actually clean it well enough or sand it or something like that? When we digged in, there was a crystal felt here where we were painting. So, and you know, there's a little watermarks here. I think I was able to get some other parts here too, like this guy here. It was showing a little bit more white. 
Uh, what's this little white spot? Oh, it's just a little paint. Little paint uh, bump there. It's covered though with paint, so it's a good thing. I got some of this bar here that was exposed a little bit, so we got to retouch those. I was able to retouch a lot of stuff, not just including the handlebars. So it was pretty productive yesterday. Uh, you know, I think I earned my lunch there still. But even though I tried my best to come back here and get these guys in there, I didn't want to do anything until I get that result, which we did. So we're good. Um, I guess we can leave this cane. I think this is perfect, right? We'll loop it like this. This needs to come up to the Gibby. I was going to bring this guy a little bit more loop here to create a little bit more protection for the wires. To, uh, but it looks kind of stupid now. I think one is probably good passing already. So there we go. I think this is fine like this. They, they look like they heat shrink this really well. I don't really mess with their switches here. The switches allows you to control the settings, but I just keep them all on in the on position. Seems like they're working fine for me. Um, there's no need to tie anything up. Let's give it a good close, shall we? Close it where it makes the mommy proud. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so this one here. Oh, let's go ahead and get this guy almost situated as well. We gotta figure out how to tie strap him down as well. All right, but before we do that, um, maybe we could, maybe we can't. This guy needs to actually stay lifted, unfortunately. Hmm. So maybe instead of putting the clamp on the C clamp right now, let's focus on tying strap because this is one thing I was going to target too afterwards, so I totally forgot about it. Um, let's go and tie this strap because we're going to flex it down. This is going to be a permanent now. Uh, what we're going to do? I'm still debating on this one because this guy was a pain in the ass to take off. So um, I mean, a little extra hose ain't going to really kill me, but I just don't like things extra. You know what I mean? That they can be cut precisely. Right, if I can cut it like maybe about three three inches or maybe not even three inches like maybe two and a half I can take this much bring him forward and this thing will lay lower like this a little bit looks a little bit more you know but then again again it was purposely did that for it to go it was supposed to go this way like this right this thing was see that see how it lied down pretty flush nicely I might just keep it long just in case you know who knows I might need it as a backup to pack something who knows, I have it like, oh, I don't have any extra holes. Everything's so tight. I wish I had extra holes to patch this hose or whatever. So maybe it'll just hold as a reserve backup hose to patch. That's my rationalization, but it might hold true or not. Okay, but let's go ahead and get this guy here squared away. So let me go ahead and set the chair to be able to capture the recording of this. So I'll have to mess around with two hands on this one. Um, so let's go ahead and set this camera now. What I'm gonna do is get a bunch of tie straps. We might go with the small, well, we can't go with the smaller one. It won't even fit through the bars. We'll have to go with at least a medium sized one, if anything. And then we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna actually tie strap it. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and get this in position. You guys can see everything here. All the wiring work. I'm glad we made this junction. I still do. But if I had my way, I might want to solder everything neatly and maybe not use the junction. But since the junction is there already, I think it looks pretty cool there to have, you know, a sure ground. Your metal cast is properly covered with ground. That's tight. So let's go ahead and get started. And we don't want to put the C clamp yet because we got this guy being held for us. So we're going to utilize that advantage right now. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna go is get this guy nicely strapped. We're gonna use plastic because plastic is not harsh on our bars. There's no need to tie it solid. We might even use a stronger tie strap. See, we can use this guy here. He might be too big. See, he won't get between these guys. So more than likely, we'll have to stick with our medium one. And our medium one, not the super small one, our medium one. I'm finding several of those, like these guys right here. These guys, because they'll fit through here, you can see there. They'll fit right through it, no problem there. All right, so let's get a couple more. I think I feel I'm gonna use at least three or four. Maybe, maybe less, maybe more. That's more than likely. Uh, Ooh, that guy's just appearing everywhere now. Man, that guy is, uh, this guy's a, what do you call that, a dripper. <laughs> That blue Loctite, the new one, it wasn't like the old one. 
All right, so we're gonna do our best here. Hopefully we can secure these junctions as well. My objective is here, you can see. My objective was to, how do we tie strap in a way to also secure these little legs that are supposed to force itself upward, right, gravity wise. And again, so we're gonna utilize gravity to our advantage. Let me flick this guy around. Sort of get him out of the way. See what we're working with. He doesn't want to stay up. Okay, so let's see here. We can go like this, and it's gonna try wrap. Oh, now there's another rusty, dusty behind the scene here. It's like way against the gas tank, but he's probably not gonna do anything to us. So, or for us. Oh, actually, he might help us. Look, I'm actually using his little lip there to actually curve these guys. See there. 